Well, praise the Lord. That's his name. It's service time again today, and we're yeah. so glad and thankful that we can come back and uh, just have a good time in the Lord and just let you know Jesus loves you unconditionally. And we praise God for that today because without the love of God, what would we be? My, we wouldn't be anything. And I'm glad that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting yeah. life. I hear a lot of people say, well, now I'm going to hell, and I know it. Well, you don't have to. You, you're you gone because you want to. Yeah. And whenever you get there, you'll wish you were somewhere else, but there won't be no way to get there. And so you see, today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow could be eternity. And so I'm glad and thankful that one day when Jesus passed by, I was like the blind man, you know. I called out to him. And whenever I called out, he stopped. Woo. Praise God. He stopped. <laughs> and he says, bring him to me. And so you see, whenever they, whenever they brought me to him, I'm right there yet. I don't intend to leave. No, that don't mean that I haven't stumbled and fell uh, because I have. I've thought about that a lot of times. You know, when I was a little feller, I growing up on the farm. I'm just an old farm boy. And that's all I ever was. And I suppose that's all I'll ever be. And just an old farm boy. And we raised sheep. And my, I, I used to follow my dad around. Uh, we'd be out there walking around the hill. And I would try to step in every one of his footsteps. And, but he was a little older and a little bigger than me. And every once in a while, I'd miss a step. And I'd have to take three or four in order to catch up. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the same way it is since I've been following Jesus. Every once in a while, I miss a step. <laughs> well, praise God. And I've got to take three or four in order to catch up. And so you see, I might, we walk up and come up to a fence and and my dad, he would just straddle the fence and I'd just stand there and look at him and reach my hands up. He'd reach down and pick me up and set me on the other side. Well, praise God. Jesus made me a promise. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of time. There's times whenever I got to stop and look up and reach up. Woo! <laughs> he reaches down and he picks me up and he sets me on the other side. Well, praise God. And you see, that's the God that I serve. What a mighty God that we serve. Well, uh, before we get carried away, we're going to uh, uh, thank everyone for uh, watching our broadcast last week. We've got several good reports. And uh, so if you didn't like it, don't tell me about it. Tell somebody else. And so I just praise God for his mercy and for his grace and want to hope that everybody had a Merry Christmas. And I want to tell everybody before I forget it, have a Happy New Year. And so I want to send it out to all of those that have uh, stood by us and those that have helped us out uh, financially. We thank God for every one of them. And our prayer is today that God will just bless you uh, and your heart will be uh, so in tune with him uh, that you'll be able to rejoice because you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Wow. You know, that's what we need to know. Yeah. We need to know that. We need to have the assurance of God in our heart. <laughs> and so whenever you know that, my, it, it doesn't really make any difference whether a lot of people like you or not uh, because you're happy anyway. Because you know uh, that the best is yet to come. Whenever you lay this old body down, uh, my, uh, we've had a lot of uh, funerals down through the years and I have helped to lay a lot of people to rest. But you know, as far as I could go was to the graveside. And that's as far as I could go. Uh, but then I would look at the family and I'd say, listen, uh, if they're ready when resurrection morning comes, when the trump of God sounds, there'll be something going on in the graveyard. And this old grave will bust open. 
And the old apostle Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know uh, that we uh, are going to see them again. <laughs> and so I praise God uh, for that assurance uh, that there's a better meeting place. You see, we get together down here. We have a good time. Uh, but one day we'll step off of the stage of action, you see. Uh, after a while, uh, my, uh, the older you get, the closer to the edge of the stage you get. One of these days you just step off and just kind of uh, disappear. And uh, you're not gone for good. You're just gone for a short time uh, because Jesus is coming back. Uh, and so you just pray that God would have his way in our hearts and in our lives uh, that as we go forth, we'll not go in our strength or in our power, but we'll go in the demonstrations of the Lord. And so again, we want to thank you and praise God for you. And my prayer is that God will bless you down through the coming year, uh, that you'll be able, uh, am I to help people, be able to uh, uh, help the gospel? My word, God tells you to. I, I tell people now, uh, if, if God don't tell you to send it to me, don't send it. You give it where he tells you to give it. I, and so I, I'm glad, am I, that God takes care of us and he watches out for us. I'm a firm believer uh, that if God's in it, he makes a way. You might say, well, I don't have very much. Well, you don't have to have very much. He says, little is much if God's in it. My, you just take that little boy's lunch. It wasn't very much. And I mean, there was a multitude of people, a multitude of people, a multitude of people. And whenever he took it and he blessed it and I began to pass it out to the disciples and the disciples to uh, other people that was around about. And whenever he got done, whenever everybody got done eating, then Jesus looked at him and said, pick up what's left. And whenever they got done, whenever they picked up what was left, they had, whoo, they had more than what they had when they started. That's the God that I serve. Honey, what a mighty God. What a mighty God. I know people say, well, that's not logical. Honey, God don't work with logic. God works with faith. And if we've got faith, my God will do it. And so I'm believing God today. So you just pray for us. And my prayer is that if you're sick and you're afflicted, God will reach right out there where you're at and he'll touch you. No, you don't have to be here. And nobody has to be there to lay hands on you. All you got to do is just let Jesus lay his hands on you. And honey, he will do that. He will do that. God will lay his hands on you and you'll wonder what in the world is going on. <laughs> My, we were in church one night and the Lord spoke to me. There was a young man standing back there that he wasn't saved. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go back and, and talk to him. I went back and, and whenever I walked up beside him, I laid my hand over on his shoulder and he was standing there. My, I, I singing those old songs. And whenever I laid my hand on him, the sweat drops popped out on his forehead. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was God. Woo! My, my, my. Well, I better shut up. Praise God. I'm glad for the goodness of God. All right. Will, you better come and sing us a song. I forgot to pray. You better pray first. <laughs> That'd be good. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you once again tonight, we want to thank you, Father, for the blessings that you have given us. Praise thank you, God. Lord, for Praise being God. with our families over your birthday, for protecting our loved ones and guiding and directing Praise them. God. And, Father, we just ask that you be with us upcoming in this new year, Lord, that, that those that aren't ready, Father, to meet you will be, Father. And Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing upon this program tonight. Protect Earl, guide him, and direct him in your word. And Lord, we will not to forget to give you the glory and the honor in the name of your son, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Bless his name. Isn't that pretty? Uh, I need to sing happy birthday to the manager of this station. All right. Great station. 
he uh, was a year older and never been kissed. He used to sit on his mother's knee, and now she sits on his knee. <laughs> Roddy, no, he don't pay no attention to me for some reason. Anyway, I, I want to sing happy birthday to Rod. He's in on the control room, and he's got to make sure that we're, don't, we're staying pretty. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronnie. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord be with you and all through the year. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Bless his name. And may he have many more. Amen. Yeah. I have no idea what my wife has ironed up, but whatever it is, it's good. Well, you know, um, when you become a Christian, you take that first step in answering the call yeah. that God has on your life. Yeah. And it doesn't stop there. You have to keep on. And this song is about stepping into the water. So you got out, got to get out and wait out just a little bit deeper each time. Go ahead. Step into the water, wait out a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. Step into the water, wait out a little bit deeper, come join the singing angels, Praising the Lamb of God. As time we, the people, stand up for what is right. It is time we squared our shoulders back and raised our swords to fight. For the Bible is our weapon and the Spirit is our shield. The church needs more of its members to be workers in the field. Step into the water, wade out a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. Step into the water, wade out a little bit deeper, come join angels singing praises to God above. <clears throat> There is victory for the Christians who walks the narrow yeah. way. Yeah. There has been a prize appointed for the soul who does not stray. Oh, I want to live for Jesus, be all I should be, so that I can rest with him forever, living eternally. Yeah. Step into the water. Wait out a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. Step into the water, wait out a little bit deeper, come join the angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. Can you play it? Step into the water, wade out a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. Step into the water, wade out a little bit deeper, come join the angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. Come join the angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Bless praise his name. God. There well, you go. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> okay, brother. Praise Juan. God. Praise God. Well, we say the song sings Goodbye, World, Goodbye. We can say this little program and then Goodbye, Your Goodbye. Tonight, huh? Amen. Amen. 
I told all my troubles goodbye. <laughs> goodbye to this world in the side. This world where I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound for the land in the sky. Yes. I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on this word. Well, heaven is dear and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now there's you for me ah, when I'm good. gone. Well, I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last from the sound, I beat one stay on the ground, gonna ride with the shout, gonna fly. Oh, ride with my Lord to the sky. Well, heaven is near and I can't say goodbye, world, goodbye. Well, I won't have the blues anymore when I reach across to the shore. And I'll never pine for I'll leave behind my heartaches and tears evermore. A day may be true, then goodbye. Tomorrow I'll rise up and fly. Well, heaven is near and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now there's you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave you alone. But when I hear the last from the sound, I people stay on the ground, go to ride with the shot, gonna fly. Oh, ride with my Lord to the sky. Well, heaven is near and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Well, praise God. That's your Beautiful song. Praise God. Isn't God good? And we all praise his holy name. I'm glad for the goodness and the greatness of God. Now, last week we, we talked somewhat about how that God worked, how that it took him a long time to get everything set in order. Well, we'd like to back up just a little bit and, and talk a little bit more about Jesus as a little child. Because you see, it was the custom in those days that every male child to be circumcised on the eighth day. And so, there uh, seemingly, there was a, an older fellow there by the name of Simeon that he had been around for a long time. It seemingly, uh, according to the scriptures, he was an old man. But God had made him a promise. And God told him that he would not die until he had seen the salvation of God. And of course, if God would make us a promise like that, we would wonder, well, what's he talking about? But you know, the eighth day when Jesus was 12 years old, Joseph and Mary took him to the temple uh, for the performance of that which needed to be done. There he would be circumcised, and whenever they walked in the temple, Simeon was standing there, and he saw them coming. And he walked over. I can just picture him walking over to Joseph and Mary and taking the child, Jesus, up in his arms. And when he done that, the scripture says that Simeon blessed God. And he thanked God that he had seen the salvation of God. He seen Jesus. You see, the Jesus is the salvation of God. He is. There's no place else can you find it. Only in the Son of God. Now you might find a lot of other things, a lot of other uh, things that you're searching for and look for somewhere else. But you can't find salvation only through the Son of God. And so when Simeon saw him, Simeon was ready to 
lay back and close his eyes and go to sleep. Let me lay down and die. And so you see, my God had a lot, of, a lot involved in just bringing Jesus into the world and certain places that he had to be. And so you see, and also there was a woman there. And it seemed like this woman had been married for a long time and her husband died. And after he died, she never left the temple. She stayed there. And she prayed and she sought God. What was she praying for? I would say that she was praying for the coming of Christ. That's just my opinion. Now, I'm not always right. I, but I believe that she was praying for the coming of Christ. And here he was. She looked at him. <laughs> my, my. And she prophesied and she was noted as a prophetess. Now, I know there's a lot of people who think so. Now, the women don't have nothing to do uh, in the church. Only just go in and sit down and look pretty. They, uh, they can sing and they can give their money, but we don't want you doing anything else. But you see, I just let them work. I, and so, my, I, I, God wants us to work together for the furtherance of the gospel of Christ. It's not everybody for himself and the devil for us all. It's God wants everybody in the field working. My, I, I, you see, as Will just sang that song, we need to wade out a little bit deeper Amen. into the water of God's love. If we love people, we will share with them. We'll do what we can uh, my, to try to help them as they journey through life. I've often thought about it, you see. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of preachers that, that have, they have it rough. And why? Uh, uh, because there's a lot of times God lays it on somebody's heart to, uh, my, to dig down in their pocket and help them a little bit, and they don't do it. You see, there's been times that you needed help and you prayed about it and nobody helped you. Well, why? Because he says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh -huh. He that sows sparingly also reaps sparingly. And so you see, God wants us to come together in the love of God. My, a sharing what we have, if what we have is in our heart, we need to share it with people and let them know God loves you. Don't make any difference who you are. You might be the worst drunk in town, but honey, God loves you anyway. You might be a streetwalker, but God loves you anyway. I, I, I remember reading in the Word of God where uh, that Jesus met a woman at the well. And this woman had lived such a loose life uh, uh, that none of the other ladies would have anything to do with her. Uh, she had to go to the well of water about noon by herself uh, uh, to get her water. But Jesus was there and she met him. Yeah. You see, I I'm going to cut a long story short. And Jesus talked with her and she got saved. She received salvation. How you know? Uh, because uh, she set her water pot down. She didn't even take it with her. She set her water pot down uh, because she had so much water, living water, inside her that she didn't need the water pot. And she went back into town and began to tell all those people that didn't like her, that wouldn't speak to her, that shun her off, that they'd, they'd cross the street to keep from talking to her. My... And she began to look at him and tell him, come and see a man that told me all that ever I've done. Is not this the Messiah? Is not this Jesus, the son of David? <laughs> you see, Jesus loves you. It don't make any difference who you are, where you're at. He loves you. Uh, but you see, Jesus as a boy, 12 years old, and it was another, again, it was a custom to go to the temple. And, and at the temple this time, it was feasting time. And, and there was three feasts, uh, the Passover feast, the unleavened bread, uh, and the feast of first fruits. Three of them. 
It lasted about a week. Jesus was 12 years old. And at 12 years old, the Jewish people, uh, they, everybody as far as the people was concerned, when a boy was 12 years old, he was ready to uh, take the responsibility of a man. Accept the responsibility. And so you see, my, we got kids out there that's 35, 40 years old uh, that don't have no responsibility and don't want none. That's what's wrong around our country today. I'd rather steal than I would to work. I'd rather kill than I would to work. I don't care how I get it just as long as I get it and I don't have to work for it. But you see... God expects us to work. He said, if you don't work, you're doing it. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. The Holy Spirit told Paul to write that down. If you don't work, you don't eat. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so you see, there's just lots in this book. I tell people, if you're, if you're having problems and, and you need some help, look in the book. It's here. And he tells us in Peter, uh, in the book of Peter, he says, I will give you all things pertaining to life uh, and godliness. He didn't say and worldliness. He said and godliness. All things pertaining to life. I'm, I'm, me and my wife, we talk quite a bit. And I, I've looked at her a lot of times and I say, you know, I, I'm kind of waiting for the day and hoping how soon that it comes uh, uh, that I can be like that bird out there. What do you mean? That bird don't have a storehouse. It don't plant anything. It don't sow anything. Uh, that bird depends on God. Sometimes God uses me to feed that bird. Sometimes he uses you. And he says there's not a one of them that falls from the sky that he don't know about. Amen. Honey, yeah. whew, I don't know about you, but I'm about to get excited. <laughs> hey, <whoo>, my goodness <laughs> you see God loves you he loves you as Jesus was there uh, in the temple yes 12 years old but it come time for them to leave and they was getting ready to leave uh, Joseph and Mary he was 12 years old he was ready to accept responsibility uh, they figured he's out there in the crowd and he's ready and they made a trip to a day's journey down the road and they looked for him and couldn't find him so the next day's journey was back uh, to Jerusalem and they found him the third day sitting in the temple asking questions answering with the lawyers uh, and the, uh, the scribes you see and they was confounded at this boy 12 years old knew things and gave them answers that they didn't even know you see how God works he says he works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Honey, God can use you. I don't care who you are. God can use you. He's got a job for you. He's got a job for you. And he doesn't want you to be lost. It's up to you. The decision is yours. But today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be eternity. Are we ready to face it? My, our time's come and gone, but we'd like to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach out today and touch this unseen congregation. Touch each one, God. Those that are lost and undone, God, without hope, might they feel the drawing power of the Holy Spirit. Bleeding, bringing them to the bleeding side of Jesus uh, and they can get the blood applied to their hearts uh, and their names be written uh, in the book of life. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, touch and undergird. Bless those, Father, uh, uh, that stand by us and help us. Those, God, that are sick, might they feel the touch of yes, God. And, Father, we'll praise you for it because we know we can't do it, but, God, you can in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is our prayer until this time next week.